Thank you, Gordon. <clears throat> I don't think uh, God is laughing. I think he's smiling. And uh, for all of our graduates, what a wonderful collection of young people we have this morning. And uh, Fairview has had a part of that, along with parents and grandparents and raising our children to love the Lord. And we uh, just wish you the best. It will go by quick. I, I spent uh, Thursday night through Saturday night. I went to Orange. Hadn't seen them in 37 years. I had a little reunion with uh, my Mars Hill College baseball team. And um, boy, they look different. I, they really aged. I, I'm glad I didn't. Uh, but they, um, it was a wonderful reunion, but instead of, it was like we were transported right back 37 years ago. Uh, but we were talking about children and grandchildren and retiring from 30 some years of teaching. Uh, a Marine colonel had retired and, you know, time had just gone by. And so enjoy every minute. Well, we are talking about um, how to be more <clears throat> of a spiritual Christian. That's our series. And we have looked at how we can, uh, to do that, we need to master our will. We talked about mastering our mind and turning that over to the Holy Spirit. And today, uh, we're going to talk about how to master our emotions. And I think it's a... Uh, an appropriate time for this message, especially with it being graduation day. If you listen today and what God says about mastering our emotions, it can take you a long way in your life. And all of us here can use it at wherever point of our journey we are. You know, we all have emotions, don't we? They're a part of life. <clears throat> but don't your emotions and your responses make you wonder sometimes about your emotions? You know, we can ask, and it would be different for all of us here. For example, what triggers the emotion of joy in you? What do you see? What do you, what do you read? What do you, what do you see on, on or coming over YouTube or Facebook or Instagram that just brings a moment of joy? Or what triggers an angry outburst? What makes me angry or gets me going may be far different from what makes you angry. What brings tears to your eyes the quickest? Is it a soldier returning from an overseas trip, running and surprising his kids? You know, or is it a sentimental movie? Uh, is it uh, some family event that you go to? What brings tears to your eyes? What causes you to worry? We all have different worries, different points of anxiousness here. Who or, or what makes you jealous? Do you get jealous quickly at something or of someone or of something that someone has? Yes, we all have emotions and, and they're understandable at times, but yet at other times they're very puzzling. We don't understand why we're having them at that moment. There are moments when our emotions are appropriate, and there are situations that they get away from us, and we regret them, don't we? We regret what we said. We regret what we do. And for the Christian, our emotions can help us mature in our faith and grow closer to the Lord, and our emotions can also set us back in our faith. They can lead us to a greater understanding and wisdom of life, but our emotions can also impede our thinking at times and stunt our growth. Our emotions can, can aid us in leading others to a relationship with Jesus, or it can detour that from happening if we're not careful. It's important for us to look and see what the Bible teaches us concerning turning over our emotions to the Holy Spirit. So let me share a couple of things with you. Uh, first of all, um, 
Our emotions are God-given, and they're a, a valuable gift from God. We're made in God's image, and one thing that God has given us in his image are our emotions. Without our emotions, life would be pretty dull, wouldn't it? Imagine never experiencing joy, never ex experiencing excitement, never experiencing deep satisfaction, never experiencing love. And even motions that we think negative sometimes, motions such as fear or grief or anger can teach us or allow us to become stronger. They can allow us to become wiser. They can allow us to become more mature. Our greatest example in all things of life is Jesus and the life of Jesus, isn't it? And as Jesus walked and, and he lived among us, he showed us that emotions were a gift from the Heavenly Father. Jesus, who was perfectly human, who was fully divine. And you can read his emotions throughout the Gospels. In Mark chapter 3, it's just one occasion. The Gospel says he looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. Jesus, in the midst of being frustrated, in the midst of being angry at the obstinance of the crowd, of um, the unteachableness of the crowd, that they just weren't getting what he was saying, the lack of faith from the crowd, the Bible says he got to the point of anger. He got to the point of frustration. But his emotions led him towards healing. His emotions led him towards restoration, restoring somebody to health. That's what we want our emotions to be able to do, to be positive. Now, many factors of life can, can determine our emotional responses. We can become emotional because of our past experiences of life, can't we? We've had past experiences, and those experiences come up, or they come in our minds, and it leads us to a response of anger, of remorse, of grief. Our families of origin, the families you grew up with, your, with your mom, your dad, or your mom, or a dad, or another setting, can plot out your emotional being. We take cues from our current families, our other families, our church family, our families of, of student friends. When you go away to college or, or you go into the workforce, those that you find yourself around may mold how you'll react in your emotions in life. Our prejudices, our, our lack of knowledge, our lack of understanding can lead to emotional reactivity that doesn't make sense. It doesn't do anybody good, but yet we do it. So if God gifted us with emotions to benefit us, if God gave us in our his creation emotions to help us worship him and work with him, why do they sometimes get so out of control? Why can't we control them? Well, it's the same as the other things we've talked about, and that is when our emotions are controlled by us, when we try to control our emotions, when we try to figure it out, and we don't let the Holy Spirit control us and our emotions, they can become detrimental. That's when they get out of whack. In just the same way as our will and our mind, if we attempt to control ourselves, we're in a world of trouble. Even as wonderfully created as we are, we do not have the control, the discipline, the intellect to control all of our emotional responses. And inevitably, our sinful human nature is going to take over and unhealthy emotions are going to pour out of our mouths and pour out of our actions, and we're going to regret it. Now, the Bible reveals what 
some of these responses look like when we're trying to control things and not the Holy Spirit. From Colossians chapter 3, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Those are when, that's when emotions are controlled by us, isn't it? When they get the best of us. Or from Ephesians 4, do not let any unwholesome talk come from your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. When we control, unwholesome talk comes out. Emotions rage. When the spirit is in control, we can actually say things that will build each other up and be positive for others around us. Now, when we have inappropriate uses of emotion in our life, for the Christian, it's sinful in the sight of God. When our lives are exhibiting these types of behavior, we're not maturing towards living victoriously as a spiritual Christian. And it's also very difficult for us to be useful for Jesus and his kingdom. And these types of negative emotional outbursts, they, they come out of the reactivity of our human nature. It is the person who doesn't pause to think. It's the person who doesn't pause to pray. It's the person who's unaware and basically, Scripture says, has no self-control. Because we can't control ourselves, the Bible says. So how do we gain control of our emotions? So that we can bring glory to God. So that we're not a roadblock to the gospel or ourselves from becoming the best person we can be. Well, there's good news. The wonderful, encouraging news is that through God's help, we can master our emotions in order to bring glory to God. Look at the hopeful place where we can all aspire to grow into regarding our emotions. This is the picture of where we want to be, but it's also the picture of where we can be with the Holy Spirit's help. Instead of that other negative list that we just read, here's what the Bible says we can be. From Galatians 5 that was read earlier, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. That's where we want to be, isn't it? Or from the great love chapter in 1 Corinthians, love is one of our most valued emotions. Here's where we want love to be, right? Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Is not this where we truly want to be? with our emotional life. This can only be when the Spirit is in control. And when we begin to behave with the emotions listed above, that's when we'll be better spouses. That's when we're going to be better friends. That's when we're going to be better fathers and mothers, when we're going to be better daughters and sons, where we're going to be better believers is when the Spirit is in control. And so how do we begin to harness our emotions towards the Lord's idea? Here are some practical ways for you to start that journey. How do we get started? Well, first of all, 
realize that you have a choice how to react and how far to take your emotions with the Lord's help. Here's really the fact. People say all the time, that person makes me so mad. When this person did this, he made me, she made me so angry, I couldn't help. When this person did this, I did this, but they did it. They made me so... No. Can anybody ever make us do anything? Think a certain way? React a certain way? Yell? Get angry? The first thing to realize is that with the Spirit's help, you, God gave you free will. Gets us in trouble a lot, but it also helps us a lot. Free will says you can make a choice of how you're going to respond to people. You can make a choice what you're going to say. You can make a choice if you're going to be loving or hateful. You can make a choice if you're going to tear somebody down or build somebody up. You have a choice. Think about it and, and be aware, second of all, of, of what does trigger the negative emotional outburst in your life. What causes your patience to wear thin? Or who causes your patience to wear thin? What brings your anger to a boil the quickest? What leads you the quickest into despondency or depression? Know yourself, know those things, and begin to turn those things over to God. Knowing ourselves helps us to respond when those difficult times come. Now is the time to think about it, contemplate on it, meditate on it, as Scripture teaches us to do. And then when you find yourselves in a very emotional situation, here's maybe some steps you can take. First, take a deep breath. It really does work. I use that in deacons' meetings. <laughs> That's aggravation, right? Yeah. Take a deep breath. And then when you take that second deep breath, breathe a prayer to God to help you. You say, God, I, I realize, you know, I'm in an emotional situation. I need your spirit. I need the awareness of your spirit right now. Get God in on it very quickly. You got a short time to pray that. That's that second breath. And then when you do speak, with your body language and with your words, respond in a non-anxious way that calms the group or that calms the other person and calms yourself. We can do that. We can respond to somebody we disagree with, can't we? We can respond to somebody that you're feeling a little angry with. But if you think about it before, isn't the tone of your voice gonna, uh, gonna realize what happens next? Isn't your body language going to decide what happens next? Are you going to escalate this thing? Or are you going to speak in a calm way, even though you may be disagreeing, even though something is really making you boil to get this situation under control? And also when you speak, and this is the importance of quiet time, Bible study, prayer, Speak your words based on your Christian values, your Christian principles, not your emotions. Think about what you're going to say. God gave you a brain. Y'all can handle engineering. You can handle this, you know. I didn't understand some of the things y'all are going to be studying. And we can, too. After you have a conversation, especially if it's turmoil or or in anger, or you're, you're feeling angry about it, what I would suggest is within the next hours or days, reach out quickly to the person you've disagreed with, 
and get in touch with them. Have a cup of coffee, a Diet Coke, a piece of pizza, cake, pie. You got to make connections, especially with the people you disagree with. I guarantee you that if you just reach out and talk with them about the weather, about the sports, how bad the Nats are doing, whatever it is, you know, reach out. These other, the anxiety, the stress is going to lower because the power of Christian brother and sisterhood is more powerful than whatever you're arguing about. And on the opposite, certainly don't cut off from them. I ain't ever speaking to them again. You know, don't, uh, I had this happen. People are mad at me, you know, mad at the pastor. You know, they go the other way in the church hall. Or they, uh, they walk past and they duck their head and they don't want to say a word. Don't ignore people. They're in your workplace, in your dorm, in your home. Don't cut off. Keep the communication going. Don't sabotage. Don't talk behind their back. Don't gossip. Don't be nice and smiling with them and then go talk behind their back. That's against Scripture. You talk to them face to face. And afterwards, give thanks to God for helping you get control of yourself. You're dealing with self here, aren't you? Not others. Only person you can control is you. And God will honor that. And you know what you'll find is as we come under the Spirit's control in these ways, you're going to notice that you're gaining more self-control, which is a fruit of the Spirit. You're going to notice that you'll have more opportunities to share the good news of Jesus because people will desire to have the control and the peace and the love and the joy that you exhibit. It's infectious. So is anger. <laughs> but this is infectious as well. You'll be coming, you'll be becoming more a godly self. And I guarantee you a self is much more attractive than a non-self. The writer of Proverbs maybe captured it some of the best in Scripture, didn't he? about getting our emotions under control. He said, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. There is great spiritual power in having the Holy Spirit mastering our emotions. And we can do great things for the kingdom. So I encourage you to practice that beginning today and, and as you go forward, whatever stage or journey of life you're in, graduating uh, or have kids graduating or well past that <laughs> into other things of life, Christ wants to have control of your emotions. It'll make you a better person in him. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for modeling to us of, Lord, um, that emotions are from you, that there are appropriate times of feeling anger or feeling bitterness, but, Lord, that we can, with your Spirit's help, Lord, we can, we can turn them into good. So, Lord, um, I just ask that you walk alongside each of us. And may your Holy Spirit control uh, what we say and what we think and how we act. And that we think of you before doing anything. I ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen.